In this video, we'll be going over how to solve two-step equations involving integers. We've got a few examples here, so let's get started. All right, we're going to start off with this first problem. We've got 3x plus 5 equals 26. Now the goal here is to get the variable, this x, by itself on one side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is just drop a line down through the equal sign that gives me a left and a right side and helps me to identify which side that I want to be working on. I want to start on the left side because that is where my variable is and we need to undo all of these other operations so that we just have an x left on the left hand side of this equation. So we've got 3 that's being multiplied times x and then also we've got 5 that's being added to that x term. When we are solving equations with more than one step in them, we always want to work in backwards PEMDAS or order of operations. So that means that we're going to undo any addition and subtraction first before we move on to that multiplication or division. All right, so we've got this addition of 5, so we're going to undo that by subtracting 5. We want this to cancel out to 0. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side. I do have a video about one-step equations that goes through all of this as well. With two steps, sometimes the challenge is not knowing what step to do first. So uh, that's why I always refer back to the order of operations and going backwards, because we're undoing all of those operations. All right, so the, our fives are going to cancel out here. We're just going to drop down our 3x, and then we need to solve this side. 26 minus 5 gives us 21. All right, so now to undo this multiplication times x, we need to divide. Now we're just dividing by the number that is being multiplied times x. We don't want to multiply by 3x here. That's a common mistake that a lot of my stu students make when they're first learning to do this. Uh, we want to multiply, or I'm sorry, divide by 3 because we want these 3's to cancel out and leave that x there. If we divided by x as well, then it would cancel out the x and that's what we don't want. So we are going to divide over here by 3 also, and then let's see what we get. We're going to drop down our x, and then 21 divided by 3 gives us 7. So we've got x equals 7. Notice that when we are solving these problems, we have one line that is the equation, right? So I'll just put EQ there for that. And then we have a line that is the operation. So we are either adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing in order to get rid of something. And then we rewrite what's left, and then that is our new equation. And then we write another operation. So when you're solving these, you want to start at the top and work your way down in sort of that V or that upside down triangle shape so that you wind up with your final equation as just the answer or the solution. Whatever your variable is equals the solution. All right, let's see what we've got in problem two. So here's our variable a. Let's identify first what's happening with that a. Well, a is being divided by seven, right? A fraction is just the same thing as division. And then that term is being, uh, two is being subtracted from that two. So let's see what we're going to undo first. We want any addition or subtraction first, and then we're gonna deal with that division. So let's undo this subtraction by adding two. We always want to do the opposite operation. So these cancel out over here. We're left with a over seven and then 10 plus two gives us 12. Okay. So now in order to undo this division, we want to multiply. Now you can think of it as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is technically one a over seven. So we're just multiplying by seven over one times one over seven. That's going to cancel out that coefficient of one over seven. Or sometimes you'll just see it like this as seven. I don't want you to get confused and think that this equals seven a because this seven is going to cancel out with this 7 and leave us with just a single a and that's why we chose to multiply by 7 is so that it will cancel out with that denominator of 7 and leave us with just a all right so of course we have to multiply this side by 7 also so let's see what we wind up with here so a equals 12 times 7 is 84 so that's our solution for problem 2 in problem 3 our setup is a little bit different at first we see the variable over here on the
the right side of the equal sign, but that's okay. Our steps are still the same. We're just focusing now on the right side of this equation instead of on the left like we were before. So we see that m is being multiplied times a number, and then a number is being subtracted away from that m term. So we want to undo that subtraction first. So we're going to add 15. Let this kind of guide you to know what it is that you are adding or subtracting, right? So you're always just trying to match this with its opposite. So let's see, this is going to cancel out over here. We're going to uh, drop down our 6m over on the right hand side. And then negative 21 plus 15. If you uh, need a little extra help with adding and subtracting integers, I have a video on that. I'll link it below. I really like this method, kind of setting up a little chart here. The 21 is negative, so I'm going to put that here. The 15 is positive, so I'm going to put that in this column. Since they're on opposite sides, we want to just go ahead and subtract them. So 21 minus 15, that gives us 6. And then whatever, whichever number is bigger, that is the sign that we're going to use. So since 21 is the larger number and it is in the negative column, then that means our 6 is going to be negative. All right, last step here, we've still got this 6 that's being multiplied times m, so we need to undo that by dividing. So we're going to divide both sides by 6. Remember, that's going to cancel that coefficient of 6 out right there. And so then we're left with m equals, and then negative 6 divided by positive 6 gives us negative 1. We've got opposite signs, so whenever we have opposite signs when we're multiplying or dividing, then our answer is going to be negative. And then you just do your division or multiplication just as you would. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. Because they're opposites, it's negative. All right, so we get negative 1 equals m, or m equals negative 1. Let's go on to problem four. So in this setup, it's a little bit different. Let me go ahead and drop my line down here. Whenever you have an operation that is in the numerator, all in the numerator or all in the denominator, you want to treat that like it's in parentheses, okay? So remember when I said that when we are solving these, we want to work in backwards order of operations. So parentheses should be our very last thing that we're undoing for this particular problem. Problem. So in problem two, we had a fraction, but that other operation, that subtraction, was outside of the fraction. So that's why we got rid of that subtraction first. In this problem, that addition is inside those parentheses. So we are going to take care of that part last and take care of this division of 9 first. So let's go ahead and do that. So all of this is being divided by 9. And we are working on this left side of the equation because that is where our variable is, is over on the left. So all of this is being divided by 9. So to undo that division of 9, we're going to multiply by 9. And again, if you want to write it as a fraction, then that is totally fine. And this 9 and this 9 are going to cancel out. So let's see what that does for us. So now we're just going to have 3 plus c over 1 which is just 3 plus c. So I'm just going to drop that down so you can kind of see how that eliminates that fraction out of the way. Now we've got 11 times 9, which is 99. All right, so now we have 3 plus c equals 99. We want to undo this 3. This is a positive 3, so we're going to undo it by subtracting 3, right? That's what's going to cancel that out and make it equal to 0. We need to subtract, subtract 3 from this side as well. So that's going to cancel out there, leaving us with C equals 96. So that is our solution for that one. Okay, in problem five, let's go ahead and drop down our line. We've got five minus y equals 21. This might seem like a one-step equation at first glance. However, it is actually a two-step equation because of this subtraction sign. Now, a lot of students might look at this and see subtraction and think, okay, I need to add five here in order to cancel out. But what would that actually give us? Because this 5 is actually already a positive 5, right? The y is what has the negative or the subtraction sign. So we really need to start looking at those signs in front of each term to tell us what their signs are or how to undo any of those operations. So in fact, instead of adding 5, because this would give us 10 minus y if we added 5 here, so instead of adding 5, we actually need to subtract 5 in order to undo or get rid of this 
other number that is with our variable over here. So let's go ahead and subtract five from both sides. That is what's going to cancel out this five right here. And that negative is going to stay with our y as we bring it down. So now we've got 21 minus y, that's going to give us 16, okay? And then here's where our st second step comes in. This negative we need to get rid of. We want it to be a positive variable on one side of the equation. So in order to do that, all I'm going to do is divide by negative 1, right? When we don't see a number in front of a variable, it is an assumed 1. So this, whenever we don't see a number with even with a negative sign, it's an assumed negative 1. So that's how we're going to cancel out because we know that negative divided by negative is going to cancel out and give us a positive. And then we want it to just remain a 1y. So that's going to cancel out that and give us positive 1y. And then 16 divided by negative 1 gives us negative 16. So that's our solution for problem 5. All right, our last problem over here, we've got 3 equals negative 15 minus b. All right, so let's see how we can start to solve this. Here is our variable right here. So we're going to be looking at the right side of this equation to inform us what to do or how to undo all of these operations so that we wind up with just b on the right hand side over here. So I see a negative 15 and a minus b. Well, I know I need to get rid of this 15 first, right? There's nothing that's being multiplied times b except for that negative. So this negative 15 is what I'm gonna start with. So I'm going to add 15, very similar to what we did over here, um, except that we're starting off with a negative number, so we need to do the opposite of that. So we're gonna add 15 on both sides of the equation. That's gonna cancel out these over here and we're going to drop down our negative b and then 3 plus 15 gives us 18. all right and then just like we had in problem 5 we've got that negative in front of our variable so we want to divide by negative 1 in order to cancel that negative out because we want it to be just a single positive b and then 18 divided by negative 1 is negative 18. There we go. That is our solution for our last problem. I hope you enjoyed this video on solving two-step equations with integers. This is part of my pre-algebra series. I have a ton of videos that go over a lot of different pre-algebra topics, all topics that you might see in a typical pre-algebra class. So check that out in the link below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know what you thought in the comments. And I'll see you next time.